Hello and welcome to lesson 17.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be uh, kind of building some skills that will lead to the day-night cycle that we're going to be writing as our next big program. And we're going to be writing an event handler that can keep track of how much time has passed since we started our program. That is, we want our program to know maybe how many seconds it's been running, how many hours it's been running, how many days it's been running. You know, the amount of time really isn't important. That's up for us as programmers to determine what we need. But we also want to be able to write a program that can keep track of how long it's been running. Now you see an application of things like this in a lot of modern games. Um, one of the more popular ones that I can think of right now is just think of Minecraft. The game, when the world starts, it has about 15 minutes of daylight, and then it has about 15 minutes of nighttime. And the way the program runs is completely different depending on whether it's day or night. It affects monster spawning rates and the amount of light in the world. And that's all stuff that goes on behind the scenes that you as the player, you don't see the program keeping track of time, but you see the results of that time. So lesson 17.2, we're going to write the method that will keep track of time. And then once we know how to do that, we'll later apply that to our own day-night cycle that we develop in Alice. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 17.2, keeping real time in Alice. So here we are. We have a brand new Alice world loaded up. I mean, one of the unique things about this particular lesson is we're not even going to need any objects in the world. This is all going to be kind of under the hood, behind the scenes things that are going to run in Alice that will later be applied to our programs. So we don't need any objects, um, but what we do need to do is go to the world and we need to start keeping track of the different units of time that we want to measure through the use of variables. To start off, let's do something real simple. Let's just keep track of the amount of seconds that have passed since our program started. To do this, I'm going to make sure that I have world selected, create a new variable, and this is going to be a numeric variable starting at a value of zero. So when the world starts, seconds or zero seconds will have passed. So our name will be seconds, a numeric variable starting at zero. The other thing we're going to need in this program is an event handler that's going to handle all the time and the counting and stuff like that. So go to methods and we're going to create a new method for our world and this is going to be called timekeeper. This method right here will be the method that's constantly running in the background to keep time. Now of course we're going to need this to be running at all times so let's create an event, select when the world starts off the menu, and then right click and change it to while the world is running. While the world is running, for during, you're going to want timekeeper to run. So this tells us that this method will run over and over and over as often as it needs to to keep time. This is where we're going to start adjusting the variable seconds so that our program is able to keep track of how many seconds have passed since we started. In kind of its most basic form, all we're going to do is take seconds and increment it by one. If you right click on seconds and watch this variable, when we hit play, we can see that our variable is counting up very quickly right now. Now, this is going to vary depending on the speed of your computer, but normally you're going to get about 30 to 60 counts per second. The faster your computer goes, the faster the seconds are gonna count up. I don't want this to count up as quickly as it is, so I want to make sure that it's counting up by actual seconds. Now this is going to be a relatively easy fix. One of the things that we can do, and this is probably the simplest way to do it, is just add a duration argument of one second to our count. So seconds will increment by one every one second. If we hit play, we can see that that's what's going on with our seconds variable that we're watching. Every one second, it's incrementing by one. However, this is one of the things in Alice that drives me a little bit nuts. I don't like that it adds these decimal numbers. When I program, when I write my programs, I want to make sure that my seconds is always an integer. I don't want it to have the possibility of having a decimal. You can kind of see this a little bit better if we change the duration to five seconds. 
seconds will increment by one every five seconds. When I hit play, see the decimals still increment, they just increment a little bit slower. This makes it harder for me to work with these numbers. So we're going to adjust this program so that we're getting rid of these, these decimal points. So to do that, we're gonna change the duration of the count to zero seconds instead of five. This will essentially put us back to the point where we're counting extremely fast. Now, instead of driving the count by this duration argument, I'm gonna use a wait command on the front end. So I'm going to have the program wait on this line for one second and then count by one instantly. When I do this, seconds will increment only by whole numbers. So I now have a program that is able to count by seconds without giving me a decimal number. Now that we have a program that's capable of counting seconds, we might want to keep some other denominations that our program can use as well. If our program has been running for a really long time, seconds can get to the point where it's really a big number. And I don't necessarily need my program to know if 10,000 seconds have passed or 15,000 seconds have passed. I'd rather know how many minutes, how many hours, how many days, and all that good stuff. So Timekeeper is now going to take the number of seconds that have been incremented and start to adjust it so that we know how many minutes have passed and we know how many hours have passed. So the next thing that obviously we're gonna need is minutes. I need to store that somewhere. So of course I'm gonna store that in a variable. So we're gonna create a new variable called minutes. It will be a numeric variable and start at a value of zero. Now we don't need to change how we're counting. We're still counting by seconds. But now I'm gonna add a simple if check to my timekeeper function. I wanna know if seconds is equal to 60. When seconds equal 60, I know that one minute has passed. Normally when you're counting, once you get to 60, you just start out over at zero and add one to minutes. And so we can do that pretty simply here by taking seconds setting its value back to zero, so second set value to zero, and then minutes will increment by one. So once seconds equals 60, we'll start recounting back at zero and tell the program that minutes has now occurred one time, so we have one minute. In order to make this a little bit quicker so we don't have to sit around for a minute, I'm going to change this wait command to zero seconds. This will just make it count a lot quicker. So when we hit play, and before we do that, let's go ahead and watch minutes, hit play, seconds will start counting, and when it gets to 60, it will add one to minutes, and then start over from zero again. Our program can now indefinitely keep track of minutes and seconds together. We'll simply repeat this process for every unit of time we want to keep. So the next thing that we want to keep is hours. So we'll just create a new variable, call it hours, it will be a numeric variable starting at a value of zero. And now that we know we have a place to store hours, I know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, and I know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. So using another if check, I'm going to check and see if minutes hit 60. So when minutes equals 60, I know that 60 minutes have passed. The reason I know that is because Minutes only increments by one every 60 seconds. So after that has occurred 60 times, minutes will be equal to 60. When that happens, I want to take minutes. I want to reset it to zero. So we'll set value to zero. So minutes will now be reset and we want to increment hours by one. If we watch hours now, so let's go ahead and watch this variable. We hit play, and we're going to kick uh, minutes up to, let's call it 58 seconds here so we can watch this work. We get to 59 minutes, and now when it hits 60, hours increments by one, minutes resets to zero, but of course seconds keeps going because we're telling our program to keep counting.
So you've probably figured out how to do this by now, but the last thing we want to do is keep track of how many days have passed. So let's create a new variable called days. It's going to be a numeric variable starting at zero. Since there are 24 hours in a day, we'll add a new if condition and say if hours are equal to 24, then we know one full day has passed. When that happens, we're going to take hours and reset hours back to zero, and we're going to increment days by one. And you may have noticed that I, I made a, uh, there's a bug here, I just caught this. So we don't want world hours to set its value to one, we want it to increment by one. So let's fix that, drag hours, and we're going to increment it by one, not set it to one. This would create a problem where we could never get more than one hour. So let's uh, delete that line and make sure you have increment by one because I did make a slight mistake there. Let's go ahead and hit play and make sure that our days are being counted correctly. So before we do that, let's watch the days variable, hit play, and we'll go ahead and check to make sure that ours is incrementing correctly still now that we've made that change. So we've got to 59 minutes. And now we have one hour, so let's bump that back up to 58 and make sure that hours equals two. Okay, so our hours are now incrementing correctly. So let's take this and advance it forward so that 23 hours have passed in 58 minutes. When hours hits 24, we should increment days by one and everything resets to zero. Perfect. We now have a program through this timekeeper method that is able to keep track of seconds, minutes, hours, and days since our program has been run. Now, if, if I wanted to do this in real time, I would simply change my wait time from zero seconds to one second and hit play. I now have a program that can keep realistic time on how long it's been running. Of course, as you write your games, you probably are going to want to play with how quickly time passes. Um, while this program right here can realistically keep track of seconds, minutes, hours, and days, most games don't run on a real 24-hour clock. Um, one full day in most games is usually around 15 minutes, so you're going to want to play with some of these values right here, and you may want seconds to run really fast, or you may want to cut minutes completely out of the day and only work on hours. Uh, it's really up to you. but. What we're able to do with this timekeeper method is have a method that runs in the background. Now, for, while you watch this program right here, this is completely independent of any animations that you have running. In theory, seconds, minutes, hours, and days is always accumulating as this program is running, only my user never really knows that I'm calculating this or how I'm calculating it at all. Later, we're going to use this information right here to build in a day-night cycle into our Alice games. But for right now, this is where we're going to cut this video short. So in the next video, what we're going to do is take the same concept, but put it into more of like a stopwatch program where the user has the ability to start and stop time by button presses. Now, the reason we want to be able to do that is, you know, keeping time is great, but let's say you're making an adventure game where the user is going to walk into a blacksmith and decide what sword to buy. The user is going to be reading uh, a lot of statistics and they're probably going to be reading menus and we don't want the world passing by while they do that stuff. If they spend, you know, say 10 minutes in the store trying to pick out a sword, we don't want an entire day of game time to pass. So we need the ability to stop our program from counting in the background during certain times. So lesson 17.3 is going to focus on that. We're going to make a simple stopwatch program, but there is no challenge program for lesson 17.2. Just make sure that you can write a method that runs in the background behind the scenes that is able to count units of time and how quickly it goes and what units you want to keep is completely up to you, but you want to make sure that you have a program that can simply keep time. Now, as always, if you have any questions, something's not working for you, or you need some additional help, just leave those questions in the comments and I will help you out any way that I can. So I'm looking forward to lesson 17.3. Thank you so much for your support of the Alice tutorial series and have a great day.